So a little while back, I received a question from a viewer via the Classical Nerd Tumblr blog. Hey, could you explain how composers use cells to create material? In Bella Bartok's fourth string quartet, he used cells and their axes of symmetry to develop his material. So I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're looking at cells. In 20th century music, composers were known to develop their material through small chunks of music known as cells. If you're looking at music through the lens of linguistics, it would be easy to think of the cell as something akin to the syllable. It's the shortest chunk you can break something down into before you get to just straight notes. Cells are almost always going to be very small, and they're going to be either rhythmic patterns or small little melodic snippets that can be morphed. Cells were utilized well before the 20th century, and even show up in folk tunes, where cells form the basis of folk dance rhythms, which are unique and distinctive per dance. Pre-20th century composers would build motifs from cells and then themes from the motifs, and then develop the themes. But in the 20th century, composers said, well, why don't we just develop the cells themselves? Instead of developing the largest cohesive structure, the theme, akin to a sentence in our linguistics analogy, they said, why don't we focus on the syllable and all the variations we can do on that? All of which brings us to Bartok. Bartok's music is rife with cell development. One could reach to many of his pieces to find examples, but since our anonymous commenter mentioned the fourth string quartet, let's go with that. This is the second full system in the quartet. Now, there's a bunch of nitty-gritty detail I won't get into fully, but this is a good way to visualize exactly what cell development is. You can see these three note descending patterns, starting in the cello and then moving up through the viola, the second violin, and finally the first violin. While the rhythm doesn't actually stay the same, it actually gets faster when it gets to the violins, this is still one cell. Even though the notes aren't the same, they still are three note patterns, and they all descend by a pattern of half step and then whole step. Throughout the five movements of about 25 minutes, Bartok uses this constantly, and many ways aren't as easily visualizable as this is. Cells are great because of their size. They're small and malleable, and it's easy to apply compositional tricks to them. The axes of symmetry mentioned by our anonymous commenter is just one thing you can do with cells, but it's very important to Bartok. Probably his most famous piece that uses this is the opening to his music for strings, percussion, and celesta. If you get a cell that descends to C via two whole steps, then the axis of symmetry is C, and so if you flip it around, then you would expect a cell, a variation on the same cell that is, to go up to C via two whole steps. Likewise, you can have a descending gesture that expands to four notes, or you can move it up and down wholesale like we saw earlier. There's just a lot of stuff you can do with small little bits of music. In the fourth quartet in particular, he divides the whole chromatic scale into cells that he can easily manage. And these are designed so they can easily rotate around axes of symmetry. Instead of writing in major or minor or some kind of mode, Bartok decides that these axes of symmetry are going to determine his tonal centers for the entire piece. It's subtle, and it's not easily audible to even the most seasoned of Bartok's listeners. But it's something that Bartok decided to do right off the bat, and forms the compositional idea behind the entire work. For Bartok, being able to manipulate cells in such a way is such a fundamental part of the piece that if these axes of symmetry weren't there, the fourth quartet wouldn't even exist. So yeah, if you have a question yourself that you want to get talked about on this channel, just drop me a line anywhere in the comments section or a private message through YouTube or through the Classical Nerd Tumblr.